roots and her hair, I thought was a great look. Whether it's spooky season or not, the Adams Family will always be one of our all-time favorite eccentric families. Between Wednesday's crazy antics and comedic situations the family gets themselves into, there's a reason why the Adams have become a go-to group costume for Halloween. And now with Netflix's anticipated new series, Wednesday, you may be curious to know whatever happened to the OG characters of the Addams Family movie franchise. Without further ado, this is what the Addams Family cast looks like today. Number 20. Christina Ricci Ah yes, the most famous Wednesday in history. Well, at least for the millennials out there. Her career began in the 1990s when she was just 8 years old. Not all child stars of Hollywood make it later in life, but Christina Ricci went on to become a very prominent actress, scoring huge roles in films like Monster and Buffalo 66. For the 90s kids though, she is, and always will be, Wednesday Adams. Outsiders and, you know, children with super supernatural talents yes. have, are going. Although the whole cast of those films are incredible, without a shadow of a doubt, it was Ricci's take on the acerbic, psychopathic little girl that stole the show every time. Since her work defined the character for an entire generation, you can imagine how happy the die-hard fans were to hear that Ricci was joining the cast of the new series Wednesday, starring Jenna Ortega. Her new role is Mrs. Marilyn Thornhill, and she's a crucial member on the show. The show follows Wednesday as she navigates life in the Nevermore Academy, a school for outcasts located just outside the small town of Jericho. And by outcast, we mean vampires, werewolves, sirens, or just undefinable weirdos like the Adams. As far as we know, Mrs. Thornhill is a normie, meaning she's not supernatural. She's just an ordinary botanical sciences teacher at the school. Oh, and make sure to subscribe and like the video, or Wednesday Adams will come and try her newly sharpened guillotine toy on your shoes. <laughs> Number 19. Raul Julia Raul Julia was a Puerto Rican actor. He was very well known for his intense and diverse roles, both on stage and on screen. During his incredible career, Julia received several accolades, including a Drama Desk Award, a Primetime Emmy Award, a Golden Globe Award, a Screen Actors Guild Award, and four Tony Awards nominations. He was named by the Daily Telegraph one of the best actors never to have received an Academy Award nomination. And the Oscar goes to Alan Menken for Aladdin. His interpretation of the passionate, fiery, intense, and extremely loyal patriarch of the Adams family, Gomez Adams, was stellar. He was deeply in love with his wife, Morticia, and was very vocal about it constantly engaging in exaggerated displays of affection. He was the quintessential Latin lover, with all the weirdness and darkness that comes from being an Adams as well, of course. On top of that, Gomez was an athletic and eccentric multi-billionaire. He owned many businesses around the world, including a swamp bought for scenic value, a crocodile farm, and a tombstone factory, amongst others. He studied law, and although he rarely practiced, he took an absurd and hilarious delight in losing cases. He always said that he put many criminals behind bars by being their attorney. Sadly, Julia is no longer with us. He was beloved by millions, and the cinema industry has felt his absence deeply. He died of a stroke at the age of 54 in 1994. Number 18. Angelica Houston Angelica Houston is a Hollywood star. She might not be as active now on the silver screen as she once was, but that's maybe because she's 72 years old. Back in the 90s, she portrayed to perfection the topsy-turvy nature of Morticia Adams, Gomez's beloved wife. 
With her raven hair and her porcelain doll skin, she added a sense of dark class like no other to the franchise. Houston admits to having learned a lot from this character. She says that the upside-down personality of Morticia teaches us not to take things too seriously. The fact that she lived in such a gloomy house that she absolutely loved and that she cut off the heads of roses because she finds they're the least interesting part of the flower, everything about Morticia is the wrong side up. Except, of course, her sense of fashion, which is immaculate. Morticia walks around her gothic home like a marvel of cheekbones and fishtail silhouettes, always dressed in black. Always. Despite being a goth role model, a queen of the underworld, if you will, Houston managed to give Morticia a warm, motherly quality. We can see this in her lifelong amateur potter's quest to make the perfect bowl. But aside from her perfect interpretation of Morticia, Houston has been a very busy and accomplished actress. She received two Academy Award nominations and one Oscar for her role in Pritzi's Honor as Best Supporting Actress. Number 17. Christopher Lloyd you might recognize him as the ghoulish uncle Fester Adams from the 90s franchise, but you may also know him as Dr. Emmett Brown in the Back to the Future trilogy, the one that keeps shouting, Great Scott! Or maybe you recognize him from his amazing role as Judge Doom in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Yes, Lloyd has a natural talent for portraying weird, eccentric, and out-of-the-ordinary characters. He served as the main character in the 1991 film adaptation of The Addams Family and its sequel, Addams Family Values. In both movies, Fester ends up being involved in a complex plot to steal the Addams' legendary fortune. Later, Lloyd confessed that he grew up watching the original Addams Family cartoons, so for him, this character was very important, and it suits him like a glove. With the help of the amazing makeup work done by Tony Gardner, Lloyd impersonated the creepy character to perfection, down to the sunken eyes and the egg-like bald head. During his career, Lloyd has received three Primetime Emmy Awards and an Independent Spirit Award and has been nominated for two Saturn Awards and a Daytime Emmy Award. Today, Lloyd's not as active anymore, but he's having a well-deserved rest at 84 years of age. Number 16. Jimmy Workman In 1991, Jimmy Workman found himself making his acting debut as Pugsley Adams, but believe it or not, the whole thing was a total accident. At the age of eight, he accompanied his older sister, Chanel, to her audition for the role of Wednesday for the 90s franchise. While he was playing around on set waiting for her to be finished, the keen eyes of the producer and director fell on young Jimmy. They thought he was perfect for the role, you know, with his cute face and his happy-go-lucky personality. Once he read part of the script in an impromptu audition, he immediately got the part of Pugsley Adams, the eldest child of the Adams family, the unfortunate brother who Wednesday constantly keeps trying to and torture. Following this, Jimmy took on the role again in the sequel, Adam's Family Values, and made brief appearances in As Good As It Gets and The Biggest Fan. However, he soon realized that acting wasn't really his forte, so he made the decision to retire shortly after and started a career behind the lens as part of the technical staff of film and TV production. Today, he is 42 years old and lives in Fairfax, Virginia. Number 15. Carol Striken. In the immense galaxy of Hollywood stars, very few actors stand as tall, both literally and figuratively, as Carol Striken. At 7 feet 3 inches tall, his presence is simply commanding. From the creepy lurch in the 90s The Addams Family to the peculiar giant in Twin Peaks, his career is an incredible journey through some of film and television's most iconic roles. Each movie has its own memories. He has perfected the art of using his impressive height for dramatic effect, often playing characters that are larger than life, otherworldly, and mystical. He was born in the Netherlands in 1948, where he studied directing at the Netherlands Film Academy. 
Later, when he moved to the US, his career as an actor flourished. You'll be surprised to hear, though, that the whole thing was by chance. While there aren't too many stories of actors being randomly discovered in Hollywood, Strykin is an exception to the rule in more ways than one. He was standing on the corner of Hollywood and Vine one day when the assistant of director Michael Schultz noticed him. When Schultz saw him for the first time, he thought he was perfect for a movie he was making at the time, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Strykin was given the iconic role of The Brute, and the rest is history. Today, he is 75 years old, and behind him, some of the most memorable moments in Hollywood's history. Number 14. Judith Molina Judith Molina was anything but ordinary, and one of her favorite roles in her career was that of Grandmama in The Addams Family, which was filmed during the first Gulf War in 1991. Why do I mention the war, you may ask? Good question because Molina was a fervous anti-war anarchist. This means she was a pacifist. That title goes down better in today's political climate. Anyone that worked on the movie will tell you that Molina made it her goal to try to engage co-stars Angelica Houston and Raul Julia in the anti-war effort. One day, a staff member passed her a little paper American flag on set, and Molina, who opposed nationalism of all stripes, simply and stoically responded, don't give me that without a match to burn it. The lady had strong ideals, that's for sure. Sadly, because of her political views, she made a lot of people mad on set. But her ideologies were strong, and she was used to being ostracized at that point in her life. Her final years weren't very glamorous. She, in 2015, at the age of 88, in a New Jersey assisted living facility. Before that, she was evicted from her apartment in the Lower East Side for falling behind in rent. A far cry from her glamorous apartment in the Upper West Side that she shared with her life partner, Julian Beck, a very successful expressionist painter and actor. Number 13. John Franklin John Franklin is not only a great American actor, but he's also a writer and used to be a school teacher. In 1983, he decided to pursue his lifelong dream of becoming an actor and moved to Los Angeles. He did some acting jobs in commercials before being cast for the iconic role of Isaac in Stephen King's Children of the Corn. That was his breakthrough. In 1991, he successfully auditioned for the role of Cousin It in The Addams Family, a role he reprised in the sequel Addams Family Values in 1993. Cousin It is a very peculiar and strange being, for lack of a better word, from the Adams clan, known for his unusual appearance and charming quirks. He is covered from head to toe in long hair. Cousin It's face is mostly obscured, and his rapid speech sounds like a series of high-pitched gibberish. <laughs> Despite his strange appearance and the fact that we can't understand a word that he says, Cousin It has become a much beloved and endearing member of the Adams family, often bringing a touch of levity and intrigue to their eccentric household. Number 12. Christopher Hart You might not recognize this actor from the Adams family, but you'll certainly remember his character. Come on, take a guess. A very beloved character that you can't recognize because he has no face. That's right, he was The Thing, the most beloved appendage in Hollywood's history. Now, you may ask yourself, how does one get cast for the role of a mischievous and loyal hand? With this film. Well, it could work better. <laughs> <laughs> Well, for starters, Hart is a magician, so he's naturally very good with fast hand movements. When he went to the audition, he started showing them sleight of hand skills. Then they asked him to make his hand act. Yep, they asked him to make his hand look sad, then happy, and even nervous. He obviously did very well because he got a call back. To prepare for the second audition, he studied cartoons and how inanimate objects took on a human quality. He took this role very seriously. He videotaped his hand for hours trying different ways of walking. You know what I mean. He tried trots and gallops and also little funny skids, he imagined. The auditioners loved it and he became the thing. 
This was huge. In the Addams Family TV series, Thing was a disembodied hand that lived in a box and appeared on screen just to hand up the mail and things like that. All Thing's activities were bound to the box, but with the special effects in the 90s, Thing was running up and down corridors, playing pranks, and having a very defined personality. Imagine giving personality to an appendage. That's how good of an actor Hart is. Number 11. Dana Ivey Ivey is a very accomplished actress on and off Broadway and in the silver screen. She is very engaged and beloved by many. Her character in the Addams Family franchise, Margaret Alford, saw one of the deepest changes throughout the storyline. At first, Margaret was everything but polite and open-minded. She was appalled and shocked by the Adams' way of life. Long story short, the lady was horrified. She was particularly repulsed by Cousin It, who she had to dance with at Fester's Ball. However, by the end of the night, she was head over heels in love with him. She completely changed into a cheerful and happy character that loved everything about the Adams. Boots on her hair, I thought was a great look. As you can imagine, she starts an affair with Cousin It, and after her husband's presumed she marries him and becomes an Adams herself. They even have a child together, a mini version of it whom they affectionately nickname what? Today, at 61 years of age, Ivy is still very engaged. She still works with not-for-profit theaters and is part of the Fair Wage on Stage movement, which is a group of actors fighting for higher wages and stronger contracts in the industry. Number 10. Mercedes McNabb McNabb started her career very early in life. Her first ever role was when she was only 10 years old. She's mostly known for her role as the girly Girl Scout in the movie The Addams Family and as Amanda in Addams Family Values. It's my delicious Girl Scout cookies. Amanda is a pretty girl with long blonde hair. She is the quintessential spoiled brat. She is a snobbish, arrogant, and selfish little girl that thinks she's better than everyone else. In other words, the mean, popular girl. She loves the color pink, and when she met Wednesday for the first time in Camp Chippewa, she asked her, Why are you dressed like somebody? Well, because she's cooler than you, Amanda. That's why. In the film, she aspired to become a famous actress. That's why she volunteers to be the drowning victim, to which Wednesday replies, all your life. She also played the iconic role of Harmony in Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Echo in the USA original movie, Beer Money. Echo is the happy-go-lucky character determined to protect a newly discovered alien creature. She also had a role in Savage Land and Fantastic Four, which leads to think that McNabb got typecasted as the insufferable blonde for most of her career. Today, at 43 years old, she has retired from acting and is living a quiet life. Number 9. Kate McGregor Stewart Kate McGregor Stewart is an actress best known for Failure to Launch, School of Rock, Father of the Bride, and, of course, The Addams Family. She played the pink-wearing employment agent in the 1991 film The Addams Family. With her voluminous ginger curly hair and her colorful attire, she contrasts quite a bit with the gloomy and pale Morticia Adams when she's looking for a normal job. When she asks Morticia her major in university, Morticia replies, hexes and spells, to which McGregor Stewart's character responds, liberal arts, with a smile on her face. You have to be able to easily duplicate the look that you're choosing. Yes. So. It's only a 32 second scene, but an iconic one nonetheless. McGregor Stewart is very active on YouTube nowadays. She makes homemade videos teaching people acting techniques. Number 8. Joan Cusack Cusack is a very established actress. She's John Cusack and Ann Cusack's sister, both also actors. Talent runs in the family. She was nominated for the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress for her roles in the comedy drama Working Girl and the romantic comedy In and Out. Her role in Adams Family Values is Deborah Debbie Jelinski Adams, Uncle Fester's wife. But she is not an ordinary wife, oh no, she is a black widow, 
in other words, a serial. She marries rich men them in order to inherit their fortune. She is sneaky, superficial, psychopathic, manipulative, materialistic, cunning, and a very seductive woman that only marries Fester because she thinks he's a very rich man. In a scene at the end of the movie, she unveils her villain origin story. Apparently, when she was 10 years old, her parents didn't get her the ballerina Barbie doll in a pretty pink tutu that she desperately wanted. So, of course, she both her parents and burned the house down for good measure, you know, as one does. Cusack plays the femme fatale to perfection. It's difficult not to harbor real feelings for her character, but she has aced many iconic roles during her long career. Most recently, she played Sheila Jackson in the hit TV show Shameless. Sheila is a very eccentric and a tad deviant middle-aged woman with a very acute case of agoraphobia. She's a complex character with a kind heart, but with questionable bedroom preferences. Number 7. John Astin John Astin, a legendary American actor, is most renowned for his iconic portrayal of Gomez Adams, the patriarch of the fictional The Adams Family, in the 1964 sitcom. His journey to fame was quite unique. Having grown up in the shadow of his physicist father's dreams of mathematics, he ultimately carved his place as a celebrated figure on stage, in films, on TV, and even as a voice artist in some movies. Surprisingly, it was not his acting, but his short film Prelude that earned him an Academy Award nomination, a project he wrote, produced, and directed. With a filmography encompassing over 40 films and appearances in numerous TV series, Aston's distinctive wide-eyed gaze and exuberant presence set him apart as an actor of incomparable energy. While he gained recognition in his early Hollywood years through movies, his true breakthrough arrived via television. His debut lead role was in the ABC sitcom I'm Dickens, He's Fenster in 1962, where he portrayed an accident-prone carpenter alongside co-star Marty Ingalls. While the series only lasted for one season, it paved the way for Aston's legendary role as Gomez Adams. Based on Charles Adams' cartoons, the horror black comedy The Adams Family became Aston's hallmark work. From 1964 to 1966, he brought Gomez Adams to life, leading one of TV's oldest fictional families. His portrayal endured, as seen in the 1977 TV movie Halloween with the new Adams Family. This commitment continued through voicing the character in the animated series The Adams Family 1998-99 and portraying Grandpa Adams in the Canadian-American revival The New Adams Family. John Astin is now 93 years old and has stepped back from acting, but he will forever remain in our hearts. Number 6. Dan Hedaya Dan Hedaya often played sleazy villains. He was also excellent at wisecracking supporting roles. He played the role of Tully Alford, the Adams Family lawyer, in the 1991 film The Adams Family. Alfred owed a lot of money to a particularly unpleasant loan shark called Abigail Craven, who ordered her son to torture him. The thing is, her son, Gordon, looks just like Uncle Fester, so an evil plan presents itself. Gordon will pose as Uncle Fester to steal the Adams' fortune. That way, Albert's debt will be paid, and then some. Gordon, pretending to be Uncle Fester, then convinces a judge to grant the mansion to him and issue a thousand-yard restraining order on the rest of the Adams clan. Of course, this plan fails when the real Uncle Fester unleashes a hurricane in the Adams mansion's library. Both Alfred and Craven are thrown out a window and land in two open caskets in the Adams cemetery. Wednesday and Pugsley bury them, but it's not clear if they're still alive or not. Alfred's wife then marries Cousin Ed. Dan Hedaya is 83 now, and it's unclear if he'll still be acting or not. In any case, he's left behind a legacy worthy of a bright Hollywood star. Number 5. Elizabeth Wilson 
You might recognize her as Mrs. Braddock, the concerned mother of Dustin Hoffman's character in the iconic 1967 coming-of-age film The Graduate, or as Roz, the informant who perched on the restroom toilet seat using only the available toilet paper to report on the office antics of Jane Fonda, Lily Tomlin, and Dolly Parton as they hatched a plan against their oppressive boss in the unforgettable 1980 comedy 9 to 5. But you could also know her as Abigail Craven, using the alias Dr. Greta Plinder Schloss, the delightfully scheming antagonist in the 1991 release of The Addams Family. Elizabeth Wilson of Branford is a consummate character actress. At 93 years old, she still marvels at her role in The Graduate, considering her casting a miracle even though she had already graced both the silver and small screens on numerous occasions. Her memory remains sharp, recounting scripts, co-stars, and screen appearances from Hollywood to Broadway. In her most recent venture, she portrayed Franklin Delano Roosevelt's mother in Hyde Park on Hudson, starring alongside Bill Murray as FDR. She candidly admits that she wasn't overly fond of Mr. Murray's on and off set antics. She holds legendary actor Paul Schofield in high regard, having shared the screen with him in Quiz Show, a film centered on the rigged television game 21. Number 4. Sally Jesse Raphael Sally is a retired tabloid talk show host. She became famous for having hosted her own radio show called The Sally Jesse Raphael Show and was later shortened to simply Sally. The show had its debut on October 17, 1983 and continued until May 24, 2002. She originally had the plan of making her show a political one, but apparently she changed her mind seconds before going live for the first time. Instead of politics, she started talking about relationships and marriage, giving her audience advice. Her show became so popular that it ended up being syndicated to more than 200 radio stations. She later went on to have her own show on TV as well. Sally is the only character in the 1991's The Addams Family film that plays herself. She only appears in a short scene, but quite a memorable and hilarious one. Gomez called her on her show in an episode that the topic was voodoo witch doctors in the United States. He wanted to know where the witch doctors met, but she asked him to please stop calling as she didn't have any information on the matter. After a long and very successful career, Sally is now retired and leads a calm and peaceful life in Miami, Florida. As of March 2022, her net worth is estimated at over $40 million, so she's seemingly not doing bad at all. Number 3. David Krumholtz Krumholtz is a very active actor. He started very young at the age of 14. In Adam's Family Values, he played Joel Glicker, a 14-year-old boy plagued by an array of allergies. One night, him and Wednesday are sitting by the lake when he tells her he's allergic to almost everything. She asks him if he believes in evil, to which he replies, smiling, did you meet my mom? He later becomes Wednesday's first love. I mean, if she's capable of loving at all, of course. They even share an awkward kiss through a fence after she manages to wreak havoc in Camp Chippewa. He's the one that confirms Wednesday's suspicions that Debbie is the Black Widow. At 45 years old, David Krumholtz is still working as an actor and is very active in both the big and the little screen. His latest appearance on TV was the character William O. Bittman in a show called White House Plumbers. Number 2. Peter McNichol he is best known for his roles in Ghostbusters 2 and Sophie's Choice, and if you watch TV, then you'll probably remember his stellar roles in Ally McBeal, Chicago Hope, 24, and Numbers. McNichol is a very successful actor. He also played camp organizer Mary Granger, who was married to Becky Martin Granger in Adam's Family Values. The couple ran the summer camp Camp Chippewa for privileged rich children. They look down on overweight, disabled, non-white, or otherwise out-of-the-norm campers. Yeah, they were quite the charmers, all right. Aside from being a complete elitist, Gary Granger was also overly cheerful and perky, something that Wednesday couldn't hold her disdain for. But, of course, the feeling was mutual. He hated Wednesday and Pugsley. But don't worry, the kumbaya singing duo got what was coming to him. 
At 69 years old, Peter McNichol can't get far away from acting, and we can't get enough of him either. He's still working a lot in both acting and voice acting. Number 1. Felix Silla Felix Silla is renowned for his portrayal of the mumbling cousin It on the 1960s ABC comedy The Addams Family. Concealed beneath a body-length hairpiece, sunglasses, and a bowler hat, Silla brought the enigmatic character to life. A resident of Las Vegas for many years, Silla tragically lost the battle to pancreatic cancer in 2021. Silla's face remained hidden during his role on The Addams Family and also in roles like the robot sidekick Twiki on Buck Rogers and as an Ewok in Star Wars Episode VI, Return of the Jedi. Finally, he scored a role where he could show his face, but he had to shave his head to embody the maniacal villain Litvak, starring alongside George Siegel as Sam Spade Jr. in the Maltese Falcon sequel, The Black Bird. Standing just under 4 feet tall and weighing 70 pounds, Scylla's debut on The Addams Family took place in 1965 during the series' 20th episode. <laughs> Cousin It, mistaken for an exotic animal by a zookeeper, was nearly caged and put on display. The character was actually the producer's idea and wasn't a part of Charles Adams' original cartoons. Cousin It's voice was supplied by sound engineer Tony Magro in post-production. In a 2014 interview with the Los Angeles Times, Scylla recounted that his original shaggy costume was made from actual human hair, which made it both heavy and extremely flammable. And because everyone smoked heavily on set, dropping their butts on the floor, he was worried that he would step on one and burst into flames one day. That's why the producers decided to make a new synthetic costume, which was flame retardant. Scylla portrayed Cousin It a total of 17 times on the show. Although the series only lasted two seasons, its legacy has persisted for decades through reruns and syndication. If you watch this whole video, it can only mean one thing. You are a huge Adams Family fan. In that case, you probably have a favorite character. So which one is it? And which actor do you think portrayed them best? Let us know in the comments. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.